Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to make a UI for our login in our registration form that we did in the last two episodes. Before we start with the video, I want to deeply thank all of my subscribers, especially those of you who support me on Patreon. And if you would like to help me by becoming my patron, there is a link in the description. I would really appreciate it. So now guys, let's begin with this video. So I'm just going to go quickly through all this. I'm going to be mentioning what I'm doing. I don't think it's very complicated, so I'm pretty sure you can follow up. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to start by creating an image and I'm going to use all the canvas. How I do this is I press Alt and Shift so I can center the image and expand it to use all of its parent. Now I'm going to change the color to a nice blue. I just want to have a nice blue there. And I'm going to change the name of this image to background. So now here I am going to create another image. This is going to be called login and I'm just going to change the size. Uh, you can actually do the same and set a margin from the sides so that it is consistent with your different resolutions. So, uh, and before we continue talking about resolutions, we need to change the resolution here. Uh, the US UI scale mode, we need to change it to scale with screen size. And we can set a reference resolution of uh, something like 1080 so that it matches a HD display. And now we set a margin. So something like 250, maybe a little bit more. 300, 300, no, that's position Z, sorry. 300 like that. And in the top, I want maybe something like 120. Oh, that's too much, maybe just 80, and in the bottom, 80. So we set the margins here, so even if I change the screen size, this is going to keep a consistent margin with the screen. So now I'm going to, should we change the color of this login? Let's change it. I'm going to use a nice, what, a nice orange, uh, something. Actually, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you can uh, differentiate where is the background and everything. So now here, we are going to make a UI text and this text is going to be, just so the player know that this is for logging in. So we, we're going to call this title. Again, we can use the Rec Transform tool here and press Alt Shift and place it on top and center it on the top of the parent, which is the login image. We're going to change the text to login. We're going to center the text. We're going to increase the height to around 80. And we're going to change the font size also to 70. 60 looks good. We're just going to make it very simple. So we later are going to change the font and the colors and change the images and all of that. So now, uh, the title and all these things, they must be siblings. That means they are all under login. Or you can make another child if you want to separate your structure. So for example, I will create an empty object here. And I'm going to call it um, inputs. So inside inputs, we can have a vertical layout for our buttons and our input fields. And this inputs, we can actually uh, extend it so that it occupies all of its parent size and just move it down a bit like so. So or maybe even a little bit more and from the bottom. So we have a nice margin. And here we're going to add a component, a vertical layout. So inside here we want to add two inputs, input fields, sorry, here in here, input fields. We want two of them, so I'm going to duplicate it. And we want a button. So UI button. Let me see here upper left we want to center it like that and then you see it's all aligned and if we actually tell unity to control the size of the width you see it's going to expand it and if we press height it's going to occupy all of the space that there is but we don't want that we can set the height and the, the size of it manually so we select them all just scale it up like this also, if we don't want to spread them equally across the area of the parent, we can uncheck this child force expand height. So they were just going to be placed one after the other. 
and we can use padding and spacing to control these. So if we wanted to start in the top here, we can use uh, upper center and then add a spacing of around 60, which that's too much, 20 or something like that. You understand uh, what I mean. And now I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I think it's too big. There, there we go. Uh, now we can actually change the name of these values. So something like username input, password input, and login button. Now we can change the text inside them. So this can be called login username. And also we can change the placeholder text. So here is enter username, enter password. So now that we have this, this is very simple and very ugly, of course. But now that we have these, we can use them to submit the information to our server and use the PHP script to try to log in. Uh, but before we do that, of course, we need to add and create some scripts. We have the main script, which has, I mean, the main object here that has web. I'm going to add a component here and I'm going to call it main. And this main is going to be a singleton that is going to have a reference for all the objects that then can be accessed from other objects that need their functions. So I think it's going to be clear when I do it here. I'm going to have an object. So let's call it web and it's going to be public. So web, web, and I'm going to set it on the inspector. We can set it here, get component web. And here web equals get component web. So it is going to get the web that is in the same object and then we can access it from any other object. So how we can access it from any other object? Well, we can have an instance, a public static instance of this class. So public static main and let's call it instance. So now because this is going to be a static variable, we can access it anytime from anywhere. and um, that means we don't need an instance of this object and we're just going to set it here. So instance equals this. So you will see what I mean in a second. We need this main script like this. And now in our login object, we can have a script called login. And this login script can actually access the main class without having an instance. So for example, I want to access the web class, right? And I know the web class is contained within the main because main is our single zone. So I'm going to type main.instance.web and I can do something like login or whatever I need to do with the web. Uh, right now I can't because it is uh, private, but I can make all these functions public and I should be able to access them from the login class here. So log in, there you go. So we can do something like that. So what I'm going to do here is going to have reference to my objects within the login object. So that is my username input, my password input, and my login button. So I'm going to set them here and we're just going to set them in the inspector. You can set them through the script if you want. Uh, public, we need to have the input field, input field class. We don't have it there, so just type here using unity engine dot UI and that will allow you to have your input field class here. So public input field uh, username input and password input and we also need a public button and it's going to be a login button. Nice. So username input, password input, login button. Now we're just going to set them here in the inspector. So we have the three fields here in the login in the inspector and we just drag the username input here. We drag the password input and of course the login button. Now we need to give this login button some functionality and we're going to do it here on the start function. So login button dot on click 
dot add listener and we're going to use a lambda expression and we're just going to do it here so what we want to do is call the login function from the web class and we're going to pass the text or the value that is input in the username and in the password so it is very simple we just do main dot instance dot web dot login and we need two values here so those values are username input dot text is text and password input dot text so now when we press the login button this is going to check for the text that we have in both of these fields and it's going to try to log in with that. So now here, if we try this, hopefully it's going to work. I cannot connect to destination host, right? I forgot I have that. Uh, so first of all, let's comment this and we need to turn on XAMPP. And now let's try it one more time. So nothing's happening yet. Enter username. Uh, we have test user and uh, we can use what was it one two three four five six I think log in did anything happen I think nothing happened all right um, log in username password so let's try to debug something here um, Oh, okay, I know what happened. We just called this as a function, silly me. Um, probably while you were watching this video, you were thinking, no, you have to start a quarantine first. Don't do it like that. And I just did it. That's a newbie mistake. So, of course, it's an I enumerator. We have to start the quarantine or nothing is going to happen. So now we play this again. And uh, we just type test user. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Login, login success. Nice. And now let's change this to something like three. Login. Oh, <laughs> right. Because we created a test user three on the last episode. Uh, login username does not exist. And if we do three again and change this password, wrong credentials. Now we can hide this password, and that's very simple. We just need to do here password input, input type. Um, here, content type, standard, autocorrected, integer, doo -doo 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 -doo, password. There you go. So now when we type our password, it's going to show uh, stars instead. Username does not exist, of course. Yeah. So that's a success. We actually logged in uh, from the interface here. We need to add more functions. We're going to add a remember the, the credentials function. Also, we need to tap or enter to go from one field to the other. So for example, if I press ASDA and I press enter, uh, I want it to go directly to here so I can type my password and then enter one more time and that should submit my login. I want to do that too. Or if I use tap, so I do this and tap, tap should take me to this field. So we're going to do this and the registration form on the next video i think with this basic concept you can actually apply it to the registration form in the registration form we're also going to compare two passwords so that they are uh, the same and we're going to end this video here so thank you so much guys for watching i hope you learned something i hope you enjoy it tell me in the comments if there is any specific ui from the asset store that you would like me to use so we can use them on the next episode uh, so I was looking at this one, the first one it looks really nice. So maybe we're going to be using this one on future episodes. Thank you again guys for watching. I will see you all on the next one. Oh, and remember to like this video, subscribe and share with your friends. That really helps a lot. Goodbye.